Hey, this is Annie. And Samantha. Welcome to Stuff I Never Told You, a production of iHeartRadio. And y'all, yes, we are here with a Monday Mini that we're going to talk about a lot of numbers and statistics. Uh, With the economy the way it is, it's been interesting, question mark, uh, to watch (laughs) how the job market continues to progress or not progress. Uh, And we started wondering what it looks like for women in the job market today. Spoiler alert. Not much has changed uh, in the last 20 years. So we've talked about this often. We talked about it right after the pandemic, during the pandemic, before the pandemic. We keep talking about it. And I think it's important that we continue to do so because until there's actual change, we need to recognize that there are things that could be done that's not done. Yeah, there's so much happening. But with that, uh, I thought we would take a moment and talk about uh, women-dominated careers and then also gender gaps in different fields and what that looks like and what we need to talk about today. A lot of the statistics are coming from 2023 and 2024. So here's some specific numbers from the Department of Labor talking about most common occupations for women in the labor force. So a little different uh, in that we're not talking about everything, and we will, we will. But this is specifically in the labor force, and they're talking about a registered nurse is the highest for women, and they have about 2.2 million women in that labor force. I didn't realize it was that high, and that is the highest number that I've seen. Elementary and middle school teachers, 1,799,000. So around that point. We have managers, and all other. I don't know what all other means, but you know, I was going to put that there, which is at 1.5 million. But then if you go all the way down, because I'm not going to go through all of it. A lot of it has to do with teaching assistants, receptionists, assistants. There's a few about human resource workers, all of that. The lowest number that I have on, according to the Department of Labor, is janitors and building cleaners, which hit at 427,000, post-secondary teachers, which hit at 445,000, and preschool and kindergarten teachers at 505,000, which I was kind of surprised by. That number I would have thought was much higher. The entirety of the time that I worked in preschool, and yes, I taught preschool for about four years, y'all. I am a well-rounded worker. (laughs) There was never a dude. Yeah, I can't think of a, in my experience, and just like my anecdotal right. experience, I can't think of a, a man who was uh-uh. a kindergarten teacher. I think the first male teacher outside of like coaches and gym class didn't have happen until high school for me. Oh, that's a good point. I think mine was in middle school, but not in elementary school. Yeah, not elementary school, not kindergarten. So I thought that was interesting in itself. So those are some of the stats that I see. Um, Receptionists and clerks at 670,000, so below the millions mark. Uh, Of course, the secretary and um, administrators were at one point. 4 million, and we are going to talk about them a little more in a bit. So according to InHerSite.com, here are some of the reasons why these industries are mostly women industries. There's a historic reason. Some industries, childcare, education, nursing, have always been more populated with women due largely in part to sexism relegating women to gender-specific roles with women as caretakers. While that is changing, it's not changing quickly. Studies suggest that jobs associated with higher risks, construction and manufacturing, as we talked about, appeal more to men because women aren't as willing to risk their lives to make a living. Other experts have said women tend to avoid male-dominated industries so they can avoid the gender-related harassment that can come with them. And sometimes the occupations that appeal to women tend to offer a better work-life balance than those that attract more men, a perk necessary because women often do more child-rearing, household chores, and unpaid labor than their significant others. We talked about this a lot, constantly. We did. We talked about why women were quitting right after the pandemic or during the pandemic because it was impossible for them to do that, especially when they were staying at home and working because the automatic assumption was they would also be doing that unpaid labor at the same time. And it was not working. It isn't working. 
Mm-hmm. And coming back to those statistics, we went to Statista.com with 20 occupations with the highest share of female employees worldwide in 2023. And in this one, they have childcare workers and teacher's aid as the top occupation. And that is held at 23.8% uh, of those workers are women. So that's ridiculously high, which is what I would assume. And then nursing and midwifery associate professionals, they hold about 82% of the uh, employment. The lower ones, kind of along the whole like rugged path, I guess, is textile, fur, and leather products, machine operators, which they held at 47%, which seems really specific, but also kind of surprising when it comes to like machine products. Because we know worldwide, the use of labor, like outsourced labor, I imagine we're mainly women for that type. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. That's interesting. But uh, there's also a subsistence a livestock farmers, which they held 50% of that occupation, which was also surprising for me. Maybe they've, that, that's come around um, since then. We have librarians and archivists and curators holding at 59%. And then general secretaries were 55%. These numbers are, don't seem to match up in my head. Mm, with your experience? Well, no, because between the Department of Labor numbers. Oh, I see, I see. But this is... Like the difference between this is worldwide, I guess the U.S. and worldwide, yeah. Okay. yeah, 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 which is a whole different conversation in itself. So let's do some stats and pay from both in her site and topresume.com. So they give you different numbers, and in this one they say forty women dominated careers and their salaries. And yes, this is based off the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics, and it's compiled within the U.S. workforce. But this was from twenty twenty one. So this is in her site from 2021. So it's a little outdated. And and I will say, even though not much has changed, the numbers have changed. The figures have changed. So statistics, not necessarily, but when it comes to pay and the increase and all that, that has changed. So keep that in mind because this was from 2021. It says uh, speech language pathologists, which happen to be a big thing in with women, apparently. They hold about 95% and they make $85,000 a year. Uh, phlebotomists kept popping up as one of the highest uh, based careers. And they hold 90% of that with only 38,000. I think they would make more than that. Of course, social workers, my world here, they 83% are made up of women. They make 57. Uh, who, where? Because I no. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> anyway, nurse practitioners, which we talked about a little bit earlier, they hold about 87% and they make 118,000. Nice, nice, nice. Um, then we have home health aides who make up 87% and only make 29000 Then That's specific to medicine and health, by the way. And then we have that in business. So when we see uh, executive secretaries and executive administrative assistants, 96% are held by women, which was on board with the Department of Labor. They make 66000 a little over. Receptionists, I guess, not the executive level, but receptionists and information clerks, they hold 90% of those positions, and that's 32000 That's within the business office. And then human resources manager, that's about 80% are made up of women. And you don't, I don't know, I feel like we need to come back to this. This may be really, really specific. But as I'm listening to like, you know, am I the whole types of Reddits and all these like ask questions to the internet type of conversations... Human resource managers are mean, <laughs> but they are they are they are seen as almost like the mean girls of the office, which I found interesting. And that the eighty percent of them are held by women. I wonder. I wonder if this is some sexist narrative that just comes. Mm. They need to blame somebody because, unfortunately, HR is blamed for so many things when in actuality that's just a directive they're following. Maybe I don't know. I don't know. Just wondering, yeah. just wondering. <laughs> but they do make $136,000 a year, so oh. get it. Okay. Ladies, get it. Then careers related to money, payroll and timekeeping clerks, 86% are held by women. Bookkeeping, accounting, auditing clerks, 84% are, are held by women. Tellers, only 76% are held by women, which I thought would be much higher, to be honest. I thought they kind of would hit like the nurse practitioner scale. 
who knows? Uh, tellers make 34000 Payroll timekeeping makes 49000 And bookkeeping makes 45000 And accounting as well. We have health and fitness. These aren't surprising to me. Skincare specialists, 98% of positions are held by women, and they make around 41000 Hairdressers, cosmetologists, 92% are held by women, around 36000 Massage therapists, 83% are uh, held by women, and manicurists and pedicurists are 83% are held by women. So those are not super surprising. When we go back and talk about education, preschool and kindergarten teachers on here says that's 96% held by women, which is not what we saw in the Department of Labor. So I wonder where those numbers changed. Mm. Uh, Childcare in in general, 94% are held by women. They have uh, school psychologists, 90% are held by women, which is surprising to me. Because I had men, I had a couple of men who are my uh, school psychologists, oh, yeah. which is surprising for a small town in L.J., Georgia. <laughs> when we talked about the elementary and middle school teachers, 79% were held by women. In the creative industries, floral designers, 76% are held by women. And then more women-dominated careers can include paralegals and hostesses in restaurants, library assistants, interpreters, and translators are actually held by women as well. And they make about 30, 73%. And they can make 58000 a year. We've been meaning to do an episode on yeah, that for yeah, a while. Yeah, yeah. So some of these were surprising. Some of them were not surprising. Some of them were surprising in that there were even bigger gaps and larger uh, gaps of, like, only 6% are men. That's shocking to me on some things. Yeah, we talked about it. Uh, the skincare specialist is a huge, on on top resume, they're saying 99% are made up by women. You know what the frustrating thing is, though? That 1% of men, they, like, make more money and are more well-known. And the other part to this is I'm kind of confused because when I see, like, when they say skincare specialists, I'm assuming they're not talking about plastic surgery or surgeons, uh, which I assume would be along those lines, dermatologists and specialists like that who are actually, you know, doctors. They often work in medical spas, health spas, salons, and independently owned. So literally technicians, I guess, is what I've seen in the title as. If you work in the skincare industry, let me know. Because I I, like, I, I find it fascinating. I think it's such a great field. I trust, I trust those specialists more than I do doctors. I don't know why. (laughs) And people who want to put me under the knife. Like, give me other solutions. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, again, we talked about preschool teachers and kindergartens. They're saying that 96% are made up of women. So I don't know why the labor board, why? I wonder what that statistic came from or if it was a mistake. Dental hygienists, which we didn't talk about earlier, they make about 95% of uh, women make up 95% of the workforce. And they make $87,000 with an associate degree. So yeah, get it. Yeah, they make or break a dentist office. Yeah, usually the dentist comes in at the end and is like, "Looks all right," <laughs> but the, the dental hygienist did all the other the, the all work. the work. <laughs> but the, also, they if they're rough and they make your butt gums like yeah. swell up and bruise, yeah, 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 yeah. never go back again. I'll never go back again. <laughs> I'm already scared. I'm already scared of you. <laughs> so the, those are the numbers again. We talked about the phlebotomist, which I'm again. I really did not think that this was a female-dominated career, but it apparently has like one of the faster-than-average growth rates uh, in this profession. And yeah, they work in laboratories. Like, like that's some intense work. But they also get only like 40, the median pays of 41000 which I'm like, they have a lot to do. <laughs> this is really important work. I don't understand, but okay. But uh, I did not realize that was one of those things that were dominated by, you know, Women. Yeah. Now, let's talk about the differences in gender. So we went to Axios and looked at some of the stuff. It says this is the share of U.S. workers in select occupation categories by gender. So this was in 2023. This was created in 2023 or done based in 2023. And it was uh, made up of people 16 years and older. So in that whole comparison, it's showing that occupations that they categorize with healthcare, personal care, education, office, food preparation, legal, life, physical, social science, sales, arts, management, farming, fishing, forestry, computer, mathematical, transportation, material moving, architecture, and construction. Those are the fields that we're talking about here. At least of all of those, the women held 47% of those positions, while the men held 53% of the positions. So in healthcare support, 84% 
12% was held by women. Only 16 were held by men. When we look at food preparation and service, 54% were held by women and 46 were held by men. Education, yes, 73 are held by women, 27% by men. And as you keep going down this list, of course, the numbers shift. And it says in sales, 49% are held by women, 51% is held by men. In arts and entertainment, 48% are held by women, 52% are held by men. The farming, fishery, and forestry, only 27% are women, as where men hold at least 73% of those positions. Architecture and engineering, 17% are held by women, while 83% are held by men. And then construction and extraction, which we talked about before, 4% are held by women, 96% are held by men. And it says women now make up 47% of all workers in the U.S. compared with just 30% back in 1950s. It's been 70 years. I would hope so, but okay. But many occupations aren't so evenly split between men and women. And this is that conversation. Discrimination that serves to keep women and men out of certain occupations, firefighters hazing female recruits, or sexual harassment in dominated workplaces. Like these are things that affect the reasons why this isn't held by women. It says expectations that push women and men into certain roles. They specifically talk about that. The, the assumption that men are supposed to be better at building stuff, for example, helps explain why they make up 96% of the construction jobs and 84% of the architects. Women are supposed to be better at caring for people. So 87% are of, of registered nurses are women. And then they say, though the care norm changes as you go by pay scale, 62% of the physicians, one of the highest paying roles, are men. Again, that's that conversation that we were talking about with the skincare specialist. What are we talking about specifically and who is making the most amount of money and who is granted the most amount of money? And I thought that was an interesting statistic as well because there's so much conversation that's still happening in 2023. <laughs> I mean, it's 2024, but I'm assuming well, you're talking about the I know, but this was from 2023, article. yes. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> Just to clarify. <laughs> Just to clarify. Um, so Forbes.com did a st uh, stats on gender pay gap, uh, which they updated in March of 2024. Again, some of this information is from, again, 2023. Um, and so everything I'm about to say is straight from their article. I'm not trying to take credit for these statistics, okay? <laughs> so they talk about the... Um, General gender wage gap statistics, women earn 16% less than men on average. We know this. Women earn just 84 cents for every dollar a man makes. I feel like that number has gone down since the last time we talked about it. Possibly. I wouldn't be oh. surprised. Oh. Uh, as expected, women of color are among the lowest paid workers in rural areas, with rural Black and Hispanic women making just 56 cents for every dollar that rural, white, non-Hispanic men make. Latinas are compensated just 55% of what non-Hispanic white men are paid in 2024. Black women are paid 64% of what non-Hispanic white men are paid. Native American women are typically paid only 59 cents for every dollar paid to white non-Hispanic men. And a 20-year-old woman just starting full-time year-round work stands to lose $407,000 over a 40-year career compared to her male counterparts. That's almost half a million dollars. Yep. That's a substantial amount. That's, that's today. That's a house. That's today. It could be a house. That's, that's a nice house. <laughs> Depending on your area. Yeah. How dare you? <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> so there is a con conversation about the controlled and uncontrolled pay gap, and this is the difference. There are two types of gender pay gaps, the controlled and uncontrolled gap. The controlled gap measures the difference in pay between men and women performing the same job with the same experience and qualifications. The uncontrolled gap represents the overall difference in pay between men and women, considering all the jobs and industries in which they work. So there are different types of gaps and measurements that, that are used for this. I'm just sick over this half a million thing. So the controlled gender pay gap, which considers factors such as job title, experience, education, industry, job level, and hours worked, is currently at 99 cents for every dollar men earn. So it has gotten a little better. Mm. Dot, dot, dot. Well. Dot. 
cost of tampons. I don't know. There's other <laughs> things to factor in here. It is. And again, though, it's okay who is getting offered what. Yeah. That is that conversation. That is that conversation. And even that one cent difference is still a difference. And especially if we're on the same level. Yeah. Why? Yeah. And, and when you talk about things like you were saying, the harassment, the burnout, all of that stuff, it's quite possible. Uh, like a lot of women drop out of a career. And so they're losing money in that way because they have to deal with that. And maybe get therapy <laughs> because <Right>. of it. <laughs> and then some. Um, and we're not even talking about, oh, I don't want to talk about childcare, but like the fact that yeah. that cost in itself is you need to be making $80,000 to make even so you can send a child to daycare. Yeah. Which is nowhere near. And that's one child. <laughs> what most people are making. No, no way in hell. <laughs> and this is a conversation from the Institute for Women's Policy Research from 2023. And they're talking about the largest jobs for women with the worst pay. Um, and I'm, where do they only have five on this list? Again, this is that controlled gap. So there's financial managers where women only earn 71% of what men earn. Retail salesperson, 72% of what men earn, education and child care administrators, 79%, administrative assistants, 80%, and managers, 81%. So these are the people who have the same experience, qualifications, and have the same job are making that type of difference. So that's significant. So yeah. that, that 99 cent must be for those in like corporate is what I'm thinking. Maybe. <laughs> who are high up like CEO level. I yeah, don't know. Like, yeah. Like those are, that's the only compatible bit. And just kind of end off, I thought these were some interesting facts or research that Forbes found that we were going to end on. So the gender pay gap for entry-level positions is 18.4%. The pay disparity is also reflected in entry-level positions, where research from the National Association of College Employers show a gap of 18.4% between the average annual salaries earned by women and men, with women earning $52,266 compared to men's $64,022 on an entry-level position. Wow. Also, where's this entry-level position? I want that. I know. <laughs> I mean, where's good for you. Of? I'm very happy for you. <laughs> yes. Can I also have this, please? Thank you very much. Congratulations. I'm proud of you. But why? <laughs> and then women earn more pay than men in only three job roles. There are a few areas where women earn higher salaries than their male counterparts. Women earn 3% more than men as a compliance officers and vocational nurses and 2% more as wholesale and retail buyers. That's interesting. That, that could explain to why so many nurses are women. They actually can negotiate yeah. better or actually are compensated better or on the equal level as a man. Mm -hmm. Then there's uh, only one job where men and women earn the same pay. Despite the previous examples of gender pay disparity in the workforce, there is one job where men and women earn equal pay, teaching assistants. Both genders earn an average of $34,424 per year in this role. Educational guidance counselors come in close second with men earning a mere $104 more on average, a mere yeah. A mirror. Don't worry about it. Just, Just a, a measly $100 Just more. It's all good. I mean, <laughs> I get that that seems low on the bigger sales we're right. looking at like $20,000 yeah, yeah, yeah. differences, $10,000 differences, but come on. Still matters to me. I need that $100. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a meal. That's a good meal. Yeah. That's, that's a couple of cases of gas, people. Mm -hmm. um, and then they talk about jobs with the smallest gender pay gap. Uh, physical and social science jobs, along with physical therapy, are among the professions with the smallest gender pay gap, with women earning just 2% less than men. Just. And then jobs with the largest gender pay gap. I don't think anybody's going to be surprised. When it comes to earning power, not all jobs are created equal. According to our study, real estate brokers have the largest gender pay gap with men earning 60% more than their female counterparts. Coming in second place is personal finance advisors, where men earn 58% more than women in the same role. That doesn't make sense. No. I it wonder doesn't. though. <laughs> I wonder though if they charge differently, mm. and so if it's cheaper to go to a woman, I'll go to a woman. Damn it! So I hope she has more clients. Yeah, 
Yeah, that could be. <laughs> could be. And another random part, because I didn't even think about this, the gender pay gap affects retirement. Yeah. Which makes sense, but I didn't think about it. The gender pay gap can significantly impact a woman's retirement. This is due to women's lower earnings and higher share of part-time work. Women contribute 30% less than men to their retirement accounts. On average, women receive 20% less than men in Social Security benefits. That pisses me off. Additionally, women receive lower pension benefits than men, further exacerbating the difference in retirement savings. Altogether, these factors mean that women have less than men in three key areas of retirement, social security, pensions, and savings. <sighs> I swear they're trying to kill us. I mean, they really just, if you're not of use of working, you'd need to die, is what the, what the government seems to be yeah. telling us. You can't have kids, you can't raise kids. Get out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> So I did, I did think that these were all interesting finds, as well as the fact that they do talk about the gender pay gap by state. So obviously, we're talking mostly about the U.S. Um, as pertaining to us. So if you're from different countries, let us know. I'm sure you have similar conversations or uh, statistics as well, but we would love to hear from you. But it's interesting because I did go through and see the, the rankings of the gender pay gap as of 2024 in different states. And the highest... Uh, difference started in Wyoming with the fact that the male median annual earnings were $59,853, while female earnings were $40,976, making it an $18,877 difference, which I was like, dang, dang. Okay, but the one, and I think this is less surprising, I guess, uh, with the smaller difference is Vermont, with the male annual earnings being 55803 while women made 51931 making a $3,872 uh, difference, which is still a difference. Yeah. But, like, the fact that, that th- those are the significant numbers. And, I, of course, I had to look and see, like, what about Georgia? We're at number 41 with a $9,000 difference, while California was 45 it was pretty close behind us at $7,951 difference. So I was kind of surprised by that, that we were that low on the chart <laughs> of the gap. Yeah. yeah. I don't know if that's just the recession in general. And by the way, New Hampshire was number two for the highest gap with a $16,686 difference. I don't, I don't know much about New Hampshire, but I thought they would be more close than that. So, yeah, all this information uh, that we just spoke about uh, with the types of gaps and the, and the way your state aligns is at Forbes.com uh, if you want to look it up. But it, it was very interesting in these conversations. Unfortunately, we're still having this talk. Yes, as we t- said before, women of color, black women, Latino women, as well as Native uh, First Peoples are the, the highest uh, with the gap, the lowest at the gap, I guess, and getting paid the least and uh, discriminated the most, I guess, which is not surprising and still really, really irritating. But yeah, that's what it looks like currently. I'm sure we'll get some more numbers and we'll talk about it again in a year because I think it needs to be revisited often so that we talk about why intersectional feminism is important to how we get paid and who gets paid and how it should be working versus how it's been working. Yep. And there's a lot of uh, side quest from oh. a topic as big as this one. I was yes. recently researching women in layoffs and surprise, surprise, women are more hurt by layoffs. <laughs> so, yeah, we'll come back to talk about more of all of this. But if you have listeners, something that you would like us to focus in on, if you're part of any of these many careers <laughs> that we mentioned, uh, please let us know. You can email us at stuff at iheartmedia.com. You can find us on Twitter at MomStuffPodcast or on Instagram and TikTok at Stuff One Never Told You. We're also on YouTube. We have a tea public store and we have a book you can get wherever you get your books. Thanks as always to our super producer, Christina, our executive producer, Maya, and our contributor, Joey. Thank you. And thanks to you for listening. Stuff One Never Told You is a production of iHeartRadio. For more podcasts from iHeartRadio, you can check out the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to your favorite shows. 